and training tonight in Jesus name Amen. and I pray that the word will be of tremendous benefit to everyone Amen. hearts opened minds opened Amen. and your life opened to the Lord Amen. and the power in the name of Jesus will avail for everyone in Jesus name Amen. let's close our eyes for prayer father we thank you for this time we bless your name because you have gathered us together and for all our workers everywhere in the state here and also in all the states in Nigeria, all over Africa and beyond, Lord, we're praying that you reveal your mind to us in Jesus' name. Give us deep understanding in your word. And we pray, Lord, that the power in the name of Jesus will walk in every life without any restriction in Jesus' name. And whatever condition may be in the life of anyone, family of anyone, in the, in the surrounding of anyone, we're praying that the power in the name of Jesus will wipe every negative thing away in Jesus' name. Amen. Glorify yourself in every life. Let the word penetrate every heart and let the word transform everyone. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all the workers said a good amen. amen. God bless you. Can see now we're coming to Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verses 9, 10, and 11. Philippians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 9. It says, Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of all things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. As you look at those uh, three verses of scripture, you will see what God himself has done. You want to understand, you want to realize in verse 9, it says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. This is the work of God. It's something that is irreversible. There's nothing Satan can do about this. There's nothing any demon can do about this. There's nothing any devastating condition in the world can do about this. God has highly exalted him. And then it says, he has given him a name. You want to realize that that name was reserved for Christ, for Jesus, from all eternity. And it wasn't available to anyone, but God reserved it for him, and he has given him this name above every name. And it says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, somebody help me say every knee, Every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. And there is nothing anyone can do about that. Every knee, everyone. Even the people that think they don't want to recognize Jesus. And the people that think they don't have anything to do with Christ. Whether now or hereafter, every knee will bow. And those who voluntarily bow at this time, uh, everything that that name contains will be given unto them. And as you voluntarily surrender yourself, your heart, your life, everything you have to the Lord, and you bow the knee, not that you are forced in judgment, not that, you know, God is coming and is saying, you have not been born, now you have to bow, but you do it ahead of time, ahead of the judgment day. And it says, if you bow now, everything, every power, Every privilege contained in that name will be yours in Jesus' name. And it says the bowing down to the name and the authority of the name and the power of the name is not limited to our local communities, our little country, or even our continent. It says of all things in heaven. Even things in heaven, personalities in heaven, and anyone in heaven, it says, this is the name to which everyone will bow, and things on earth, even here on earth, thank God, anywhere you go in the world, with this name, you have the victory. 
and it says things under the earth even the things that are not seen in the unseen world in the underworld and it says that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord that Jesus Christ is master. That Jesus Christ is all in all. That Jesus Christ has the final say, the final authority, and the final power in your life, in my life. I said in my life. And it says when he has that authority, it will be to the glory of God the Father. Nothing will happen to anyone carrying this name that will not be to the glory of the Father. And as I look at you, you look like people carrying the name of Jesus. Bearing the name of Jesus. Holding on to the name of Jesus. Everything that happens in your life will be to the glory of God. Anything that will bring shame. Anything that will bring disgrace. Anything that will bring, oh, we thought was a believer. We thought everything was alright. Anything that will bring regret will not happen to you. Will not happen to me. I said will not happen to me. Everything that happens to you will be to the glory of God the Father. Let's come to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards words who believe? Do you believe? That power will work towards you. And it says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and he set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. Stop there for a moment. There are some people, they say they are believers. I don't doubt many of them are believers, but they have not thought of what God has done. They have not thought of what Calvary has accomplished for us. They have not thought of what Christ affirmed and confirmed and actually did when he died on the cross of Calvary and he said, it is finished. You see, there are people who are living under the old covenant uh, kind of uh, pressure and they do not understand things are different now. With me, things are different now. With you, things are different now. With your family, things are different now. What the church of the living God thinks are different now. You know why? Because God raised him from the dead and he made Christ our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer to sit on his right hand in majesty on high, far above, not just a little above our Redeemer our lord our master our savior and the one who has our interest in heart he says is far above all principalities and powers you believe that no principality or power can touch him they are not that powerful they are not that high and they are not that mysterious that they raise up their hands and then they taught jesus sitting on the right hand of power on high and ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says look at this one look at this one verse 6 it says and he raised us up i'm going to put my name there and he raised me up together and made me to see together in heavenly places in christ jesus if you marry those two verses together for christ is far above all principalities and powers and is seated on the right hand of god on high and we are seated with him no principality can touch you and no personality, evil personality can touch you. And they say something is uh, flowing in the air. Something is uh, flying in there. They say something you know, is, you know, once you are outside and you see somebody and you are talking to him like this, you will not know when that thing comes upon you. They are not talking about you. They are talking about them. Amen. I said they are not talking about you. Because it says you are raised up. You are lifted up. And you are lifted high enough that no principalities and powers can touch your life, can touch Christ in Jesus' name. If you believe that, it is to you according to your faith. I believe it. I said I believe it. 
and it is to me according to my faith in Jesus' name. Look at this part above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, whatever name makes you afraid. You hear the news and they mention that name, it makes you afraid. And you hear somebody coming from that country, coming from this country, and it says, I'm coming from such and such a place. You're afraid of where he's coming from. You're afraid of the name of what he mentioned at hand to him. You're afraid of the person. Don't come near me. Don't come near me because I know if you are coming from that place, I don't want to catch. There is a hedge around you. There is a fence around you. And it says you are raised up and you are lifted up far above all those principalities and powers and every name that is named. Every name that is named. It looks like as you wake up, if you read this verse in the morning and you go anywhere, any name that is named, if it is negative, will not come upon you. But goodness and mercy shall follow you every street, every community, every office, everywhere you go. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, even in 2020. After all, 2020 vision still stands. I said 2020 recovery still stand and 2020 power still stand and this name the name of Jesus still stands whatever is going on anywhere or everywhere that name will cover you and he has put all things under his feet how many things under his feet some people think, you know, in their Christian life, all things except this, all things except that, there's no exception. I said there's no exception. All things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. And fullness of him, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Today we're talking about the name of Jesus. The topic is the all-sufficient name of Jesus. Somebody help me repeat that. This name is sufficient for you. In the day and in the night is sufficient for you. In your family, in the office, this name is sufficient for you. And the things that happen all around you, this name is sufficient for you, especially given to you, and especially given to the whole church. And this name will preserve and protect you anywhere you go in Jesus' name. The all-sufficient name of Jesus. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise and the provision in his mighty name the promise and the provision in his mighty name number two the precept for promoting his magnified name the father has already magnified that name exalted that name and he has given us precepts too on how we promote his magnified name the precept for promoting his magnified name point number three the power of prayer in his matchless name matchless name no other name like this name and no other name and no other scene can work effectively and effectually in your life like this name the power of prayer i'm sure you are going to pray tonight everything you pray everything you ask in this name will be given to you Everything you ask for your family, whether the family members are with you here or they are far away in other countries, whatever you ask in that matchless name will be given to you tonight in Jesus' name. We're concerned for our members and members of our church. Now we're meeting in this little uh, congregation and this little congregation, that name will be with them. You know, so sometimes when we're absent from people or people are absent from us, we're wondering what's up me to him now what's happening to him now send the name to them i said send the name to them and the name will do much more than you can do in your own personal presence in jesus name 
and the power of prayer in his matchless name, wonders will happen. Actually, you understand, there is a period of time, special period now for our country and for the whole world as we come in these, uh, you know, little, little groups and we are sending forth our SOS and save our soul. We're sending the SOS to heaven and we mention the name of Jesus. Jesus will stand up at the right hand of the Father, and it will avail for every one of us in Jesus' name. You will hear good news. I said you'll hear good news from our friends who are far away, our members who are far away, everyone, good news, and about you, I'm going to hear good news about you. Let's come to point number one now, the promise and provision in his mighty name. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 12. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, we're reading from verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. Underline that, understand that. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven, given among men whereby we must be saved. It tells us how special the name of Jesus is. It says what the name of Jesus can do and what the name of Jesus is built to do. No other name can do that. There's no salvation in any other. Salvation means that he rescues us from sin. Picture it like this in your mind. There is a well that if somebody falls in there, there is no doctor there is no helper, there is no giant, there is no champion that can rescue somebody out of that well. Once he falls into that well of poisoned water, and once he falls into that well of dirty, polluting water, devastating, destructive, damnable water, nobody can rescue him out of that place. But there's only one person that has the power that has the love, that has the authority to strike down his hand and pick that person out of that deadly, terrifying water. His name is Jesus. That's what he's saying here. Neither is there salvation, rescue, restoration. Neither is there regeneration. Neither is there remission of sin. Neither is there freedom from sin. Neither is there salvation present salvation, further salvation, future salvation, neither is there final salvation, neither is there the salvation that God counts as real salvation in any other. For there is none other name, that's the name again, that's the name again, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And you know, if anyone is not saved, he's lost for all eternity. If anyone is not saved, he'll perish for all eternity. And there's no other name. That's why it says God has highly exalted him. And he has given him a name above every name. It's the name that brings salvation. In fact, as you look at Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 21, it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, somebody tell me the name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There's no other Savior. This is the Savior. This is the only Savior. This is the one recognized by heaven, approved by heaven, confirmed by heaven. And this is the Savior that God the Father has given to us. And he said, the virgin shall bring forth his son. And this virgin, when he brings up the son, when he, when he bears the son, the name will be Jesus. You see, everything about Jesus was not left to any human being. Was not left in the hand of Joseph, in the hand of Mary, in the hand of the Pharisees in the hands of the of the priest 
the name came from heaven. His mission came from heaven. His birth came from heaven. Conception came from heaven. Life came from heaven. The power to work miracles, everything came from heaven. And he said he was living here on earth and his mind, everything was in heaven. And when he died, he rose again and went to heaven. Everything about this name is from heaven. Satan cannot do anything about this name. And Satan cannot decrease the power, the authority, the anointing in this name she shall bring forth his son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins you know what you need to take care of make sure you are one of those people his people and thank god i am i say thank god i am i'm one of his people and he says his people he will save them from their sins and as we believe on the lord jesus christ to become one of his people and his name the power in his name the provision of his name the promise of his name will save you from all your sin in jesus name and when you close your eyes here on earth, already you have your name in heaven. Already you are seated together with him in heaven. The moment you live here, there's not going to be any delay. There's no ghost low on the traffic going over there. You'll be there with the Lord in Jesus' name. And forever, forever you'll be with the Lord in Jesus' name. Come to John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 12. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become. To them he gave power to become. He gave power to become. That means you are not like that naturally. You are born into this world. You are born in sin. You are born into this world. You are born in weakness. You are born into this world. And the life you live and the action you manifest shows that we're children of the devil. Jesus told those people, the Jewish people, you have your father, the devil. But we're going to change fatherhood. I said we're going to change fatherhood. And that's in your hand. That's in your hand. As you say, I turn away from darkness. I turn to the light. I turn away from Satan. I turn to Jesus Christ. He gives us the power, the privilege, the opportunity to become sons of God. Sons of God. I said sons of God. You see, when we turn to the Lord, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand this. He the Son of God, became the Son of Man, that he should make the sons of men to become the sons of God. We do not remain the same. Once we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he came from heaven to earth, that he can take the people from earth to heaven. He came as the light to the darkness of the world, that he will take the people in darkness and take us to the light of the glory of God in heaven. He became the Son of Man, that he would make the sons of men to become the sons of God. He has touched my life. I said he has touched my life. He has made me to become son of God. Are you there? Can we say that about you? Well, if we're sons of God, then we have the characteristics of God. Then we have the power, the protection, and the privilege of the sons of God. Look at that again. For as many as be received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. It is the name. As we believe in that name... All that that name supplies, it will grant unto us in Jesus' name. We're coming to First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. Look at what the name has done. And look at what the name can do. In First Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 9. Look at this, look at this, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor effeminate, nor abusers, nor, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, 
nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you stop there, you will not know what the name of Jesus can do. And you will not know what you can become through the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, as we look at verses 9 and 10, you see, who then will escape? Who then will be freed from these sins? Look at verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. I didn't hear my amen there. Amen. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. See what the name has done. That those who are in the dungeon of sin and those who are under the condemnation, damnation of sin, the name pulled them out and the name pulled them up. And the name made them now to be washed, to be cleansed, to be justified, to be forgiven, to be purified, and to be sanctified. I pray that name will continue to walk in every life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, we're reading from verse 43. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 43. Look at this, Acts 10, 43. 43 it says to him give all the prophets witness that through his name through his tell me yes. whose name yes. there's something the name of jesus can do that nothing else in the world can do psychology cannot do that and philosophy cannot do that all the things and the knowledge of people in the world cannot do this all the prophets give witness to this that through his name whosoever i like that word whosoever because that brings me in that brings you in whosoever believes in him should have remission of sins no matter how dirty no matter how deep and no matter how far gone in the in the, in the filthiness of the world whosoever believes in that name remission of sin cleansing from sin and the, the, the believers benefit will be yours in Jesus name in fact he tells us in first John in first John I'm reading from my verse uh, chapter 2 first John chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 12 first John chapter 2 verse 12 uh, I write unto you little children young converts uh, babes in Christ I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiving you for his name's sake. For his name's sake. Hey, there are people that think, hey, you know, if uh, he's going to give me forgiveness, I should feel sorry. Yes, you feel sorry. And they think I should cry. I don't know about that. They think I should roll on the ground. They think I should give myself, you know, all the names, God. I'm a wretched rat. I'm wretched this. I'm wretched that. I'm not worthy to even talk to you. I'm not worthy to be called a human being. I'm dirty and the dirtiest. I'm, you know, polluted and the most polluted. I don't know about that. It says it is not for the sake of the crime it is not for the sake of you know beating yourself and calling yourself bad bad names it is for his name's sake for his name's sake you come in the name of jesus father he died for me father jesus gave himself for me father jesus spilled his blood for me if i were the only sinner in the world jesus loved me so much he will come to die for me and he has died for me he's my substitute and my savior and for his name's sake my sins are forgiven for his name's sake your sins are forgiven i said your sins are forgiven it's through him you have eternal life, everlasting life. Look at First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 11. And this is the record that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. This life is in his son. You know him, you recognize him as the son of God. And you know that he came to stand for you. And he came to sacrifice himself for you. And it says in verse 12, he that has the son has life. Do you have the son? Yes. Then you have life. 
that's eternal life, that's abundant life, that's protected life. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. There are some people, the only glory they find that they have religion. But they don't have the son. They have tradition. But they don't have the son. They have a good morality. But they don't have the son. They have the good, uh, you know, temple where they worship. And they can say, that is my church. But they don't have the son. If you don't have the son, whatever else you have, you don't have eternal life. But if you come to the son, the son of God, and you accept him, and you believe him, and you say, that is my savior. You have the son, you have everlasting life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Look at that. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that she may know that she have eternal life and that she may believe. Look at that. You have believed already. Then it says, I'm still writing to you. I want your faith in the name of Jesus to be firm and confirm that she may believe on the name of the Son of God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask, tell me somebody there. If we ask, tell me, tell me. What are you going to ask in this special period when they say that something is flying in the air and moving here and moving there? Some people, fear paralyzes them and fear stops their mouth. They're not even asking anything. But you know, as you come in the midst of the children of God in these uh, small, small congregations, anything you ask, even today, the Lord will grant unto you. If you ask to be alive, you'll be alive. If you ask to be free, you are going to be free. If you ask to be protected, you are going to be protected. If you ask that God will single you out and protect you and preserve you, that even if 10,000 is falling by your side and 1,000 on the other side, if you ask that after it has happened to hundreds of thousands of people, it will not come near your door. Whatever you ask tonight, it will give unto you. I'm asking, I'm sure God will give unto me. I'm asking for myself, I'm asking for you, I'm asking for our church, and I know God will give to us in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 14 again. And there's the confidence. Do you have confidence? I said, you have confidence. You know, some people, all the, whatever happens and whatever news they hear, has taken the confidence of 30 years of believing in God away. They have been believing the Lord, believing the Lord. I was saved 19 such and such. I was uh, born again 19 such and such. For 30 years now, I've been believing the Lord. All of a sudden, they hear something you know, on the radio. They see something on the television. They see something on the internet and they say, that's that happened, that's that happened when this is happening all the confidence that they built up in 30 years of following after the lord everything has gone down and is drowned in the sea but thank god my confidence is still there i have confidence in god say it for yourself i have confidence in god i have confidence in the name of jesus that anything you ask according to his will he hears us and if we know in verse 15 that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have we have i have the petitions that were desired of him he has answered your prayer he has answered my prayer you know, in the name of Jesus, only in his name, and in no other name, and by no other means, and in no other way, in the name of Jesus, number one, we have salvation. We have salvation. And it's the kind of salvation we're sure of. It's the kind of salvation we can tell anyone, anywhere, this is what I have. Number two, we have full salvation. Not partial salvation. We have full salvation for your soul for your spirit and for your body and for your family we have salvation the salvation that they purchase on the cross of calvary number three we will have final salvation final salvation look up here if christ is driving a vehicle 
And that vehicle is on the way to heaven to glory. And he picked you up at the point of repentance. When he gets to the middle of the way, he's not going to stop the vehicle going to glory and say, come down. I don't want to pick you again. I don't like you. I don't want you again. I made a mistake in picking you. When I picked you, get down. Will Jesus do that? He has given us initial salvation. He's given us full salvation. He will give you final salvation. He will not drop you by the side of the road. You will not die. You will not finish your journey before you get home to God in glory in Jesus' name. Through that name, we have full salvation. Through that name, we have full redemption. Full redemption. That evil one cannot touch you again. And through that name, we have, we have freedom from sin. It's the Savior. He came to save us and to pull us out of that well of destruction. He gives us victory over temptation and trial. And it is through that name. And whenever any trial comes, any temptation comes, all you have to do, mention that name. In resisting the devil, resisting temptation, mention that name and that evil one, the tempter, will flee from you in Jesus' name. Temptation will lose its power when you mention the name of Jesus. Not only that, that name gives us dominion. That name pulls you up and it pulls you over and you have a dominion in Jesus' name. It gives us spiritual strength spiritual strength if you feel weak spiritually or you feel weak um, spiritually and physically you feel weak emotionally remember that name just mention the name even if you don't know how to pray you're walking up and down you're saying jesus you're saying jesus you're saying jesus before you say jesus a number of times it will hear in glory and when he hears in glory it will strength strength unto you in jesus name actually through that name we have sufficient grace till the end of time sufficient grace till the end of time when the load is heavy sufficient grace will come and when the road is rough sufficient grace will come we have power in all circumstances power in all circumstances and we have enduring the strength the power the energy to endure until the end i thank god for you i said i thank god for you I've seen you before, you know, many years ago. I know you will still be there. And if, and if Jesus tarries, after some years, if I get a chance to, you know, meet with you like this again, I know you will always be there. Because the Lord will give you the power to endure to the end in Jesus' name. Uh, give me a lively amen. Point number two now, the precept for promoting his magnified name. The precept. Now we have a precept, we have a commandment from the Lord that we need to promote this name. Let me remind you once again in, Rebel, in uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And let us see what the Father has done for this name. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly 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 exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow anything in your life that has been standing stubborn against your progress against your happiness and against your joy tonight at the name of jesus that thing will bow things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father now what can we do and what are we supposed to do that we honor that name 
We exalt that name. We promote that name. And let's come to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. The Lord is telling us that as we live in life and move on in life, there is something we do that will promote and exalt the magnified name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You see, that's how we promote the glorified and the magnified name of Christ. You know, some people limit only the name of Christ to the time of prayer. But you know, it's in every area of our lives. It says, whatsoever we do, in word, in conversation, in deed, in action, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. It means, look at this, it means whatever you cannot do in the name of Jesus, what happens? Don't do it. You know, if, you, if somebody gets angry at you and is, you know, bringing out some unprintable words and you say, ah, I can go to dictionary and find some terrible words and talk against you. But before you speak any bad word, you think, can I give out this word to him? Can I say you are this, you are that in a negative way? And I say, in the name of Jesus? No, you cannot because Jesus is loving and whatever is against love cannot come out of your mouth and jesus christ will not you know line up and agree with your anger so if somebody gets angry and you say something you know you cannot do that in the name of jesus that means then this name will guide you and this name will direct you whatever you cannot think in the name of jesus a thought is coming to you and you cannot say i accept that thought i rejoice in that thought in the name of jesus then you cannot do that you cannot think that whatsoever you do whatsoever you think whatsoever you meditate on whatever you act on whatsoever you do in deed or in works anything do all in the name of the lord Jesus giving thanks to the Father uh, in uh, him. Look at verse 23. It says in verse 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Remember in the name of Jesus, and then you do it with all your strength and all your power as to the Lord and not unto men. You see that uh, shields us from doing evil to anyone. Whatever I cannot do, whatever I cannot say, whatever I cannot plan, and I cannot say I'm planning this, I'm, you know, organizing this, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus against my brother, against my sister, against my wife, against my husband, against a fellow worker, against a fellow member, whatever I cannot say or do in the name of Jesus, I should not even do it privately, whether he will know or he will not know. Verse 23, whatever I do, whatever you do, we we'll do it in his name and we we'll do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Give me a good amen. amen. Second Thessalonians, we're reading from chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 11. It says, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling fulfill and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith or prayer that the name of our lord jesus christ may be glorified in you you see, uh, that, that's why the Christian is very careful where he goes. If, let's say, there are some people who are ruffians, there are some people who are notorious sinners, there are some people, uh, they are like a gang. And then you say, well, they're in my community. And uh, if I keep on going away without uh, mixing with them, they'll think I'm holy, holy person. And they will say, I am not social enough. The point is, you cannot be 
is such a gang and glorify the name of Jesus. People are stealing. You cannot be part of them and say, I'm glorifying the name of Jesus. People are into their nightclub. They're into their defiling lifestyle. You cannot associate with them and say, I am glorifying the Lord. Whatever you do, wherever you go, whoever you associate with, here is the precept he has given us to promote his name. Look at that verse 12. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our lives will glorify him. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6. Now we command you, uh, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul the apostle said, we're commanding you. And I'm not commanding you because I'm an apostle. I'm not commanding you because I'm an overseer. I'm not commanding you because I'm a pastor. Or because I claim any authority or dominion over you. No, not at all. Now, we command you your brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition, after the teaching, after the message which ye received of us for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. You know what he's saying? He's saying we we'll live an orderly life. We we'll live a good life. We we'll live a holy life. Why? Because that's the command that comes in the name of the Lord. We'll obey the word of God. We'll not uh, pull down the name of Christ. We'll not pollute the name of Christ. We will not blaspheme the name of Christ. But everything we do, everything we say, and everywhere we go, we'll honor, we'll lift up, we'll magnify, we'll glorify the name of Jesus Christ. In Second Thessalonians, Second Timothy chapter two, Second Timothy chapter two, verse nineteen, it says, "Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal: the Lord knoweth them that are His, and let." Everyone that nameth the name of Christ, everyone that nameth the name of Christ, anyone here that names the name of Christ? Do you mention the name of Jesus? How often? Every day, every day. You read your Bible in the morning, you pray in the morning, anywhere you are, you mention the name of Jesus. Something happens suddenly, you are not expecting. The only name that comes to your mouth is the name of Jesus. You are desiring something, you are looking for something, you are asking for something, and the name that comes as you approach the Father is the name of Jesus. Now look at what it says. It says, let everyone, every pastor, Every worker, every leader, every believer, every Christian, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ, nameth, he keeps on naming the name of Christ, mentioning the name of Christ, everyone that nameth the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. That's, a, that's the commandment and that is the precept he has given us so that we can promote the magnified name of Jesus. Verse 21, if a man therefore put himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. You are a vessel unto honor. And everything you do will honor the Lord. Everything you do will glorify the Lord. Anywhere you find yourself, you say, I am here to honor the Lord. Anywhere you are ministering, I'm here to honor the Lord. You are not there to fight. You are not there to get angry. You are not there to get into a political riot. You are not there to do any funny thing that will say, ah... And you say you are a Christian. Ah, you say you are a worker. Ah, you say you are a preacher. Look at this now. Look at what you are doing. Even if other people will shout and fight, but you, a deeper life man, deeper life woman, may you not bring shame to the name of Jesus in Jesus' name. It says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor. 
sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work prepared unto every good work you'll be prepared to every good work in jesus name and this name of the Lord will walk mightily in your mouth in Jesus' name. And look at um, look at Hebrews chapter thirteen. Hebrews chapter thirteen. I'm reading here from verse uh, reading from uh, verse fourteen. Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. It says, "For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come." By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually. What does that mean? You know, we ought to praise God. And there are times somebody does not feel like praying. Pray anyhow. There are times somebody does not feel like praising God. This is happening. That is happening. That is down. That is up. And economy and this and that. It becomes a sacrifice of praise. And as you offer that sacrifice of praise, even when you didn't feel like, the Lord will accept that sacrifice. Blessings will come down. It says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, continually. Never let that sacrifice cease. That is the fruit of our leaves, giving thanks to, to what? To his name, to his name. You see how the name comes up every time? But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased sometimes you are supposed to visit a convert you don't feel like make it a sacrifice and do it anyhow and sometimes you are going you are supposed to visit a member uh, you see uh, you know you see falling by the wayside or you see in the fellowship even as we're kind of uh, rearranging the fellowship at this uh, brief uh, period check up on them even when you don't feel like visit them call them uh, and make it a sacrifice of a uh, praise and love and the lord will honor everything we do for the glory of his name uh, in jesus name we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 5 acts of the apostles chapter 5 reading from verses 41 and 42 acts of the apostles chapter 5 chapter 5 reading from verse 41 and he departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name to suffer shame for his name they didn't mind they said it's for his name anything that comes because of his name we're going to endure it you know we're going to come to this fellowship now how can i do that we've been in this our large fellowship you know all the time and i like the feeling of that you know thousands of people and we're together we shake hands and we're happy how are you brother your sister but now for these uh, few weeks what to be in this uh, location like this and like that for his name's sake i love it i said for his name's sake i love it do you love the fellowship we are in here today do you love the fact that we are together face to face today i love it do you love it for his name's sake everything we have to do we're not doing it you know grudging and grumbling how can that be how can that be this is beautiful anything in the name of jesus is beautiful anything we have to do for the glory of god that is beautiful even when the persecutors even when something happens and this is painful if it is for his name's sake i am for it how about you I can't hear your voice very well. Hey, look at verse 42. It says, And daily in the temple, and in every house, deceased not, daily in the temple. When is chance to be in the temple? We're in the temple. And if it is chance to be in the house, in every house, a house over there, a house over there, a house over there, we are there to not only to, uh, it says, not, uh, this is not to teach and to preach Jesus. You'll be there with us. I said, you'll be there with us. No disagreement, no discord, no criticism. 
no opposition. Whatever the Lord says we should do and he passes it on through our pastor, it will be done in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're reading here from verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of of our Lord by the name of our Lord you know if an apostle is talking to us and he's not saying I'm telling you Corinthian believers by my name by my authority after all you know I'm an apostle he says no he says I am talking to you I'm pleading with you and I beseech you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that she all speak the same thing no divergence, ye all speak the same thing. No disagreement, ye all speak the same thing. No contradiction. That's what they said. That's what we are going to do. No contradiction. By the name of Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. There will be no divisions among us. No disagreements among us. No infighting among us. No contradictions among us in Jesus' name. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, as we recognize the name of Jesus, as we exalt the name of Jesus, as we uh, promote that name of Jesus, what do we do? That we will honor the name properly, exalt the name properly. Number one, perceive the preeminence of the name. Perceive the preeminence of the name. This name is higher than any other name. Any other name on earth, any other name in heaven, any other name in the past, any other name at the present, any other name in the future. Perceive the preeminence of the name. Hey, look at, you know, the governor of his state says, this is what to do. All of us, we immediately, because he's our governor, we obey. I about Jesus Christ, whose name is greater and higher than any other name on earth, any other name in heaven. If we perceive the preeminence of his name, we'll do everything he has called upon us to do. Number two, promote the promotion, uh, pr pursue the promotion of the name. Pursue. In everything you do, everything you plan, everything you are thinking about, you say, I want to promote his name, I'm pursuing that. I want to promote his name, I'm pursuing. I'm not thinking of myself, I'm not thinking of my own advantage, I'm not thinking of what I like, of my ease, of my comfort. I pursue the promotion of the name. Number three, preserve the purity of the name. Don't allow anything coming from your angle, coming from your family, coming from your life to pollute his name, to defile his name, to blaspheme his name, where to exalt the magnified name of Jesus. And you want to preserve the purity of the name. Number four, you want to prevent the pollution of the name. If you're among people and they're acting like drunkards and they are making fun, making jest of the name of Jesus and taking some of the words of Jesus and casting aspersions on that, you want to quietly move away from that because you want to prevent the pollution of the name. Number five, you want to prefer the praise of his name. Prefer the praise of his name. There are times you have temptation as if you should you kind of promote yourself, exalt yourself, but you want to prevent, prefer the praise of the name of Jesus. If I do this, I'll feel happy, but it will not promote the name of Jesus. And because I prefer the praise of his name, I'm going to do all things in such a way that the Lord will be happy I am for the name. Number six is to preach the power of his name. Proclaim the power of his name. Publish the power of his name. You're preaching the power of his name. You're not uh, saying well, you know, uh, there are some difficulties the name of Jesus cannot resolve. You're not saying, you know, there are some problems. What, what problems? We cannot mention the name of Jesus 
us us now. After all, you know that this is happening, that is happening, that is happening. No, you preach the power of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus will do everything. The name of Jesus will clear every dirty thing in a community in Jesus' name. And whatever is moving here and there, when we mention that name, that thing must bow in Jesus' name. Because we are preaching the power of the name of Jesus. Number seven, present the purpose of the name. What's the purpose of the name? It's to save us from our sins. What's the purpose of the name? It's to give us answers to all our prayers. And when you are presenting that name to your congregation, to your friend, to anybody, one or two, few or many, you present the purpose of the name. You project the purpose of the name. You pattern the purpose of the name. That even your own life is a pattern to the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number three now. In point number three is the power of prayer in his matchless name. The name of Jesus is matchless. The name of Jesus is mighty. And the name of Jesus is incomparable to any other name in the universe, on the earth, anywhere. And that name will work wonders. Yeah. Even today in your life, yeah. even today in our congregation, even today in the whole church, everywhere in our country and beyond our country, in our continent, beyond our continent, beyond Africa, this name of Jesus will reach out to everyone and will reverse every negative scene in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, look at this. We're looking at Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18 and we're reading from verse 18 it says verily i say unto you whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say unto you if two of you shall agree as touch on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, where two or three are gathered, tell me, where two or three are gathered together in my name there am i in the midst of them even if we have to be three or five or ten christ is there yeah. and as we are in our fellowship here tonight fellowship of workers christ is here yeah. and whatever we ask in his name tonight he will do it yeah. get ready for it turning around yeah. Get ready for a miracle. Amen. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. I will not be damned because I believe. Because I believe. Look at verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. Hold on now. You know, if the sun is shining up in heaven and you are walking outside, there is, you have the shadow because of the sun shining. You understand that? And when you are going, as you are going, will your shadow stay behind? Even if you say shadow, don't follow me, don't follow me. I want to go alone by myself. Will your shadow listen to you? As the believer is walking and is moving, this shadow, signs and wonders will follow. Amen. Even if you say, I didn't fast today, I didn't pray too much today, shadow, how can you follow me? You have no choice. The signs and the wonders must follow you. Amen. The moment you believe, once you're a believer, I am a believer. You know what I believe? I believe that anywhere I go, signs and wonders will follow me. 
I believe if I came to your house, signs and wonders will follow me to your house. And as I come here to you today, signs and wonders followed me. And I could not say, don't follow me, don't follow me. Today is not miracle revival hour. Today is not, uh, you know, for signs and wonders. Anywhere I go. I'm talking about you now. I said I'm talking about you. Anywhere I go, I cannot tell the shadow to run away or to depart from me. Signs and wonders will follow. It followed me here tonight. I said it followed me here tonight. You will have your portion. And look at look at verse look at that verse again in verse 17. It says, And this shall that shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, tell me. Look at that. So, so I heard somewhere, maybe you have heard, they said, if you touch something, something will come on you. They say, if you try to open the door, as you handle that handle like this, they say something will come. If they say, if you are talking to somebody and the fellow is near to you and he breathes and that breath comes near you, they say, you've got it. But it say, if you drink any deadly thing, not even touching, not even breathing, even if you drink, and it, not deliberately, not deliberately, if you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. Looks like your long life is still secured. Yeah. That is what he promised before. He said, I will honor him. And with long life, will I honor him? That long life is still secured. Yeah. Nothing touches that long life. Yeah. Do you believe? Yeah. Am I talking to you? Yeah. Do you accept? Yeah. I will see you next time. Yeah. Look at it says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and we are going forth and preached everywhere. We are going to preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Who will be going with you? Who will be walking with you? Who will be talking with you? Who will be assisting you? The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Everything we're, everything we're hearing now, the Lord will confirm with signs following. Every promise of God, the Lord will confirm with signs following. Every declaration in the word, the Lord will confirm with signs following. Hey, let's come to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 10. Reading from verse 17. Here it tells us in verse 17. It says, And the 70 returned again with joy. How are you going to return home today? And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through 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 thy name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall be and be uh, fall from heaven behold i give unto you witness fear timidity corona what has he given to you Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Make it personal. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. As you go about your normal duty, nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
as we are going back home, as we are coming back to church, as we are going to the office, as we are going to the market, nothing shall by any means hurt you. As we are in the hot climate, tropical climate, or it's a wind, wintry uh, climate, whatever climate, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Where is my name written? Yes. I about you. Where is your name written? Yes. It's written in heaven. Heaven knows you. You are in heaven's register. And all the good things uh, that happen to those people in God's register, those good, good things will happen to you. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 14, reading from verse 12, it says in verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do also. He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever ye shall ask, tell me, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask, what? anything in my name i will do it he will do it i said you will do it and look at uh, chapter 15 we're reading from verse 16 chapter 15, 16 chapter 15 we're reading from verse 16 it says ye have not chosen me but have chosen you i have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit you are going to bring forth fruit. Amen. This condition and this uh, brief uh, period, a few days of, you know, have this fellowship, reorganize and do that, will not make you fruitless. Amen. In fact, you are going to be more fruitful even at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. You bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, tell me, tell me, in my name, He'll give it to you. I have it already. You'll have it and preserve it in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 16. We're reading from verse 23. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. What that is saying is that we don't pray to Jesus directly. Jesus help me. Jesus heal me. Jesus do this. Jesus do that. We Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. You ask the Father in his name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. This period will not decrease your joy. This time of the day and this time of the year and this time in the world will not decrease your joy. Amen. Everything Christ had promised still goes on being fulfilled even in this special period to be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 26. In that day ye shall ask in my name and I say not unto you I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. He will do it in your life. Let's come to the practical use of that name now. I'm reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily in the gate of the temple, which is called beauty to ask arms of them that entered into the temple 
who seen Peter and John about to go to into the temple as an ass, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him, when John said, look on us, look on us. He had something to give. I have something to give you tonight. And we can say, look on us. He says, he gave them heed. He gave unto them heed, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, have I none but such as I have? Give I thee something greater than gold, something greater than silver something greater than money, something greater than tangible physical things, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That name has never lost its power. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And what that name did in the past, is still able to do today. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. You will praise God today. How did that happen? Look at verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's the power in the name of Jesus. There is power in Jesus' name. All power, almighty power heavenly power, absolute power, unlimited power. Behind that name, the name of Jesus, is the finished work of Calvary and the Father's approval of that name and the Father's authority of that name. Behind that name is omnipotence. Omnipotence means all power. And that's why when Jesus came and he saw the disciples, he said, all power is given unto me on earth and in heaven, it says, go ye therefore, because of that name, there's omnipotence behind that name. That name has infinite, inexhaustible resources. In his name, we have salvation. We have sanctification. We have strength. We have sufficiency. And we have supernatural supply. Today, supernatural supply. What you could not get on earth, that name was supplied to you even today in Jesus' name. By faith in that name, we have redemption. By faith in that name, we have righteousness. By faith in that name, we have the right relationship with God. It's by faith in that name, we have reconciliation. And all the middle wall of partition between us and God, that wall is broken down. We can come to the presence of God without fear, without worry, without anxiety, because that name has given us access to the Father. The name grants us healing. The name grants us health. The name grants grants us wholesomeness, the name grants us holiness, the name grants us heavenly inheritance. Whatever it is you need, any, name, any area of your life today, that name has made it available unto you. What a name, the name above all names. All names in the past, the name of Jesus is above them. All names in the present, the name of Jesus is above them. All names in the future, all names of angels, of men, of spirits, all names of problems, all names of plagues, all names of principalities and powers, the name of Jesus is above them all. It's above all names, visible and invisible. In the Matchless name of Jesus will have pardon. Every sin will be totally forgiven. And whatever it is anybody is carrying guilt or condemnation about, the name of Jesus grants us pardon. Number two, the name of Jesus grants us peace. There's peace between us and God. He does not bear grudge against us. He's not looking at us as, you know, that rat and that, uh, you know, wretched one. He's looking at us peacefully. We have peace with God. Actually, it is the name that gives us our own Passover right. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
this angel of death passing around will pass over you. In the name we have purity. You'll purify our heart, purify our soul, purify our mind. In the name we have partnership. This is how we have partnership with God. That whatever God can do, He passes on to us and He holds our hand. He said, Come on, let's go and do it together. We have partnership with God because of that name. It's in the name we have protection. You have protection. He'll protect you. In the name we have power. No weakness. I said, No weakness. No inability. There's power in your life. There's power in my life. I said there's power in my life. You will have backbone to stand in the name of Jesus. We have preservation. He will preserve your life. You know, it's going to preserve your family. It's going to preserve your children. It's going to preserve every member in Jesus' name. In the name we have prosperity. You will have enough and to spare. In the name we have all possibilities. And in the name we have the purchased possession. This is the time that the people of God, without exception, will possess their possession. I'm talking to you in particular. As an individual. Whatever happens any other place for you, you will possess your possession. I will possess my possession. I said I will possess my possession. And look at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. And we're reading here from verse 21. First John chapter 3. Reading from verse 21. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And with believing on his name, whatever we ask, we're going to receive. Make something definite tonight. Ask something definite and say, Lord, this is what I'm asking for your life, for your family, for the church. Make it definite. It will be done. Amen. After you have asked, just mention the name of Jesus and seal it up. Don't doubt anything. Don't look here and there. There is not enough demon. There is not enough devil out of the pit of hell that can reverse whatever you ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight, tomorrow, anytime, that name of Jesus must walk in your life. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. I said, are you ready? Yes. Before you stand up, do you know he's going to answer your prayer tonight? Yes. Do you know whatever you ask tonight, according to his word, his will, do you know that you are the favored one is going to answer your prayer? Rise up now and tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Oh Lord, I know, I know that name of Jesus carries power. It carries authority and it carries all possibilities. And I'm going to have the age tonight. I'm going to have the age tonight. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. What a privilege you have today. What a privilege you have today. That name has not lost its power. Tell him. You're strong in that name. You're unconquerable in that name. You're unbeatable in that name. Nothing unexpected can come upon your life in that name. Circumstances do not determine your life. Whatever is blown in the air does not determine your life. You hold the key in your mouth. You hold the key. 
in your utterance. You hold the key. It's in that name. And it's whosoever. Whosoever. Don't say, I am not this, I am not that. I'm not a prayer warrior. You are a believer. That's all you need. In my name. He the believers on that name. Salvation is there. Full salvation is there. Final salvation is there. Victory is there. Total freedom from sin is there. No fear. We have power. We have authority. We have dominion in that name. And we're going to persevere until the end. Nothing can stop our journey. It's a name above every name. The name that brings courage. The name that gives you backbone. The name that gives you authority. The name that gives you all your petition. The name. The name. You'll call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from all their sins. The name is to give you the fullness of joy. The name is to answer all your petition. The name is to cancel, demolish. Everything that is contrary to your progress. The name. But you consecrate yourself to magnify that name. Consecrate yourself to exalt that name. Consecrate yourself to lift up that name. Consecrate yourself to promote that name. You understand? You perceive the preeminence of the name. That name is greater than the family name. That name is greater than the name of any idol, any personality, any power. That name is greater than whatever the name may bring fear in your heart. Perceive the preeminence of that name. You pursue the promotion of the name in your actions, in your behavior, in your lifestyle. You pursue, you're running after the exaltation of that name. You preserve the purity of that name. That name is pure. No defilement. That name is pure. No connection with sin. That name is pure. No connection with defilement. In your own place, in your own life, in the private, in the public, preserve the purity of that name. Don't allow the name of Jesus to be blasphemed through you. Don't put the name of Jesus to shame. Anything you do in the private, anything you do in the public, anything you say, any association, your fellowship ways, don't allow people to say, uh-huh, and say you're a Christian. And the name of the Lord is polluted because of you, never. You prefer the praise of the name. That's your preference in life. You guard that name. You protect that name. You preserve that name. You secure that name. 
you watch over that name. So the name of the Lord is being praised and glorified every time. Preach the power in the name. Don't exhibit weakness as we're talking about the name. There's no sickness in that name. No weakness in that name. There's no affliction in that name. And there's no curse. There's no yoke that can abide when we stand in that name. Awesome. Mighty. Great. Irresistible. Unbeatable. The name of Jesus. Present the purpose of that name to the Father as you pray. Remind the Father. That name is given to me. That I might have total victory. Complete victory. Irreversible victory. And be personal. Me. Me, I have power. Me, I have authority. Don't think somebody can do it better than you are. The name of Jesus is as mighty in your mouth as in the mouth of the Apostle Paul, in the mouth of Apostle Peter. You just mention that name, doesn't matter who you are. You believe in that name, the same authority and power that will be manifested through Peter, John, or Paul will be manifested through you. That name has unlimited power, irreversible power, irresistible power. Behind that name is the omnipotence of God inexhaustible resources infinite possession the holiness in that name the sanctification in that name the strength in that name the soul sufficiency in that name supernatural supply in that name faith in the name faith in the name has made this man strong and has given him perfection and wholeness is the name. Reconciliation comes through that name. Righteousness comes through that name. Right relationship comes through that name. There's peace in my heart because of that name. No fear, no fear. When I see the blood, I will pass over you because of that name. The spirit of heart because of that name. Partnership with God. They went forth and they walked with them. Confirming the word or signs following. There's partnership because of that name. Protection because of that name. Prosperity because of that name. It will supply all your needs according to its riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Because of that name. Your purchased possession is yours. It's paid for it. It's paid the full price. The believer will possess all his possession because of that name. Great possibilities, unlimited possibilities infinite possibilities 
because of that name. The Father has given us that name and at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. All things are yours. All things are yours because of that name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the believing people of God said, Amen. You have all things. Amen. Everything you have asked for from Thursday power night till yesterday Friday till this morning until this very time, the Lord has packaged everything together. Amen. You will see miracle, definite miracles in your life in Jesus' name. No tears, no fears, no anxiety, no worry. You, who am I talking to? You will possess your possession. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the glorious name of Jesus. For the all-powerful name of Jesus. For the mighty name of Jesus. For the majestic name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the magnified name of Jesus. We thank you for the matchless name of Jesus. We thank you for the mountain-moving name of Jesus. Lord, every one of us here, over there, over there, everywhere, we have spoken to you and we have mentioned the name of Jesus. We know on everyone heaven is opened yeah. on everyone the doors of heaven are opened yeah. on everyone the windows of heaven are opened yeah. on everyone the showers of blessings are coming down yeah. lord everything everyone has asked you and they have asked in the name of jesus we have this assurance and i remind your people of this confidence you have done it for every one of us and Lord, I pray you will confirm the answer in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. During this period, when the world is at alert, during this period, when the world is wondering, how will this end? How will this end? Oh Lord, while you are helping the world and while you are giving solution, I gradually, as I think that down, all your people that stand before you this day, no evil will come upon them. No calamity will come upon them. Any symptom, any affliction, anything that appears like, is this not what they are saying? Lord, clear it away in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for your church and we pray your protection will be upon everyone. We pray for all your children, your protection will be upon everyone. And Lord, we are asking for your mercy for the world in which we live, for our country for our continent Africa and for the whole of the world we pray oh Lord this plague will come to an end in Jesus name you said whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever we lose on earth will be loosed in heaven you said if we shall ask any sin and we agree together you said it will be done Lord we live in a world that needs you and therefore Lord we are praying you preserve the lives of people that Lord this sin that is coming sweeping over all the world arrest it in Jesus name we we'll pray, Lord, everything will come to an end. Speedily, quickly, let it come to an end in Jesus' name. We know you are a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of power. And Lord, we we'll pray you manifest your power in your love and your mercy. Lord, let it come to an end. And while it's coming to an end, let your people remain with the immunity you have given every child of God in Jesus' name. Whatever may happen on this side, on that side, 
It will not come near the believer. Amen. Long life. Amen. Long life. Amen. Long life. Amen. Give to every one of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. And preserve us in the faith. Amen. Everything we say will be by faith. Amen. Every deed we do will be by faith. Amen. Everywhere we go we go, will be by faith. Amen. And when we stand on your word, nothing can contradict whatever we desire in your name. Amen. Confirm your power in every life. Amen. Confirm your miracle in every life. Amen. Joy in your life. Amen. Fullness of joy in your life. Amen. Testimony in your mouth. Amen. Lord, we thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another amen. amen. A final amen. amen.